Hey everyone, before I get into today's video, I want to remind you to enter our Trials of Mana giveaway. Now, you do not need to get the Nintendo Switch version. It can be on any platform of your choice the game happens to be releasing on. We will be giving away the copy on the last day of this month, but you can enter to win a copy for yourself uh, by, well, subscribing to the channel hitting that bell icon, commenting down below, and liking the video. And if you do that on every video in this month, you get an additional entry. So good luck, and let's get into today's video. So welcome to a special weekend video. And I needed to make this video because I, since the beginning of the year, I've kind of expanded the channel a little bit. We cover more than Nintendo. We, we focus a lot on Nintendo, but we, I wanted to be able to talk about next gen. I wanted to be able to talk about the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, the games, all that jazz. I'm going to be getting those platforms and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but sometimes the news isn't always good. And today is one of those days where it, it looks like there could be trouble in paradise for Sony. Uh, and we're talking the kind of trouble that could lead to the PlayStation 5 being delayed an entire year, and it's not even because of COVID-19. Let's get into it. So what you're seeing here is um, comicbook.com put up, a, I think, a few days ago. Um, and it originated from a Twitter user that now has his, his profile private in Jeff Rickle. Now, I want to be clear about Jeff Rickle. He has actually been known to be rather negative uh, towards the uh, enterprises of of Sony. Um, he, I don't know if he's kind of an Xbox fanboy or something. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but the only reason I actually want to talk about it is because it's been substantiated by Windows Central Journalist Daniel Rubino and Jez Corden, um, who have heard very similar things. So these are this is a more you know more legit, not you know less biased uh, people that are saying this. Not just Jeff Rickle; he was just the first person to bring it. Uh, so the report uh, begins by noting the collective feeling in the developer community is that Sony has dropped the ball partially because it underestimated Microsoft and the Xbox Series X, and this is why, by certain measurements, the PlayStation 5 specs are considerably inferior to the specs of the Xbox Series X. Now, again, you remember Mark Cerny came out, and he's like, hey, look, you know, you don't look at the teraflops or this and that. He, you know, really tried to... to, to Puff it up, but it's more than the teraflops that seems to be a problem. In fact, the CPU seems to be a bigger issue. Um, according to this new rumor, and again, this is a rumor, the PlayStation 5 cannot maintain its clock speeds, which if you go back and watch the presentation, you kind of saw them talk about the clock speeds and how it's not locked, and it, it, it that, that makes up an issue uh, when you're trying to uniform things on a platform. But anyways, going on, uh, it's causing severe overheating problems which in turn is causing the hardware to fail at an alarming rate. And these are dev units failing, which are usually beefier than the units that are sold at retail. So that's a problem, of course. Um, further, the lack of power is also apparently leading to optimization issues. While the Xbox Series X is reliable in terms of the power it provides, the PlayStation 5 is unpredictable, which make, which in turn makes op optimization very challenging. Essentially, the comparison to the Xbox Series X is that they're locked clock speeds and they don't dip. There's no variance to it, and that's easier to work with than something that varies, uh, especially varies to the degree that it appears PlayStation 5 does. Um, the report continues by noting that Sony is looking into a complete console redesign to alleviate some of these issues, and that's where the year delay comes in. This redesign may lead to the console looking similar to the Xbox Series X, uh, which, by the way, the, the Xbox Series X basically did a micro ATX style build, which is a, a kind of a living room PC uh, style build out there. It's not, you know, super super popular, but it's well known and, and easy enough to get decent cooling for it. Um, so here's uh, Daniel Rubino, uh, one of the more reputable people here talking about this, uh, where it says Sony may have overshot and underestimated uh, Microsoft, and uh, he's quoting Jeff Rickle here. So we're just gonna we're just gonna open up the Jeff Rickle piece here, and it says, "Talk to the devs working on the games. I know several, and I know people directly uh, for Sony. I work in the business of another sector. The collective feeling is Sony screwed up this gen. They underestimated Microsoft and were overconfident again. Expect delays to the PlayStation 5 and heating problems to rival the Xbox 360, where that was the big issue for the Red Ring of Death." Uh, Sony is really concerned right now. Don't you find it odd they've yet to really show the hardware despite pressure to do so from Microsoft because the hardware fails at an alarming rate. The system cannot maintain its clocks. The M.2 gets hot quick. Uh, more throughput means more power consumption means more heat. So basically that really fast SSD, which is legitimately faster than what uh, the Xbox Series X is using, uh, 
they're not doing a very good job dissipating the heat from it, so it's, it's causing slowdowns. Uh, the underlying issue is Sony did not realize the form factor needed to be changed, and now they are concerned about having to completely redesign it and have it look more like the Xbox Series X Tower because it will look like they have just copied Microsoft. And they don't, by the way, they don't have to make it look like the Xbox Series X Tower, but uh, if they don't want to remanufacture parts or something, I, I don't know, I'm not really sure. Uh, there's other ways that you could uh, still have a more co traditional console like look, but then it might look like the original Xbox VCR, so I don't know. Um, do you also not think uh, it's odd they haven't really shown off some launch titles? Reason? The devs have no idea what to optimize for because Sony has no idea what the PlayStation 5 will deliver in consistent performance, in consistent performance yet. And they do not want to show off captures from dev systems that do not match what a production console would produce. The people I know closest to it have said it's really bad. Sony is just hoping the PlayStation name can help them weather it for two years so they can get to a redesign. You've been warned. Sony rest rested on its laurels and took for granted what was going on. They heard rumors of what Microsoft was doing, but did not believe Microsoft could pull it off. Third parties verified Microsoft achieved all they set out to do and have tested the Xbox Series X, which, by the way, um, every dev that has come out uh, to say anything about the Xbox Series X, uh, they've all been glowingly positive. Now, there are devs that are glowingly positive about uh, the PlayStation 5 as well. However, the ones we're hearing from are the ones that had, don't have dev units yet. They just watched the Mark Cerny thing, and they said the SSD makes a big difference. It's like we're, we're hearing all these cool things from devs about how excited they are to work with the hardware, but these are also devs that were not currently at that time when they made those comments working with the hardware. Uh, we haven't really heard much from the people working with the hardware uh, until this, this thing, this tweet, this whatever it is. Uh, anyways, um... It says, third parties verified Microsoft achieved all they set out to do and have tested the Xbox Series X. Microsoft was very open about letting them, which of course they were. They, they've, let, they've been very confident about the Xbox Series X. Uh, Sony rushed things to try to get something out. Them seeing that Microsoft is ready to manufacture right now caused some problems. That's See, this is where I kind of get to some of the... It sounds a little bit fanboyish to talk about how, like, oh, they didn't think Microsoft would be ready to manufacture yet. That, that I think that's a little bit of a, a fanboy remark because we're talking about systems that came out in, what, 2013? Uh, we're, we're literally in 2020, so by this holiday, at least seven years. Uh, to think that Microsoft wouldn't be ready to manufacture a new system, a, a new generation system in seven years, uh, that's pretty asinine to me. And again, I, th this is the problem with Jeff Rickle in general, is he is generally negative towards Sony and has a slant. It doesn't mean he doesn't have connections. It just He has kind of a slant to how he, how he covers Sony. Uh, so again, that's not something I actually believe at all, that they were caught by surprise that they could suddenly release a system in 2020. It's been seven years. Of course, I mean, they, they, it should, it's actually surprising that they couldn't release a system last year. So, um, anyways, the debate right now is do they delay it by 6 to 12 months to get it right, or do they force it out to keep pace with Microsoft and deal with a high fail rate and performance issues, kind of like the Xbox 360? Uh, I, know for, uh, I know for a fact attempts to optimize the PlayStation 5 take far more work than for the Xbox Series X. The devs say the Xbox delivers steady power that is always predictable, while the PlayStation 5 does not and is not predictable all the time. This makes optimizing near impossible. It cannot always deliver the power you ask it to, even in short so essentially, um, I, I guess the the big credence to these rumors, uh, this report, whatever you want to refer to it as, we're going to call it a rumor, uh, just because the originating source of it, even though it's being backed up a little bit by Windows Central people, uh, the originating source of it has a history of down talking Sony. Um, I want to just point out that we have only heard Mark Cerny talk about specs and give us a logo we haven't seen the system we are essentially six months maybe seven months from playstation 5 supposedly launching and we have yet to see a game for it i mean we, we've seen now actually two games for xbox series x because there was a another game showing off today so we've seen two games for xbox series x we've seen nothing for playstation 5 we haven't seen even what playstation 5 is capable of in a dev space like when he gave and mark certainly gave his um, big, long-winded speech at you know for the Game Developers Conference all about the specs and about what can happen. He talked all about these hypotheticals and theoretical things and didn't show anything. Oftentimes at GDC, when you're showing off new technology in a press conference, uh, you would show something. You know, we've seen seen tech demos, seen ball demos and, and and facial demos and all this stuff. You know, Unreal Engine. When that was, you know, every time there's a new version of that, like there's a a tech demo that comes out with it. There was nothing like we didn't get to see the playstation 5 do anything 
And it's crazy because the last time we saw PlayStation 5 actually do something was, what, two years ago when they showed that it's faster loading times with the buildings and all this stuff in Spider-Man for PlayStation 4? Well, congrats. A system way more powerful than PlayStation 4 can easily handle a PlayStation 4 game with the SSD and run it quicker and load things quicker. And congrats. That's huge. That's great. It's an improvement to Spider-Man from PlayStation 4. They purposely have not shown us anything from PlayStation 5. Now, there's going to be a reveal event. There has to be a reveal event or something to hype up the release, especially since Sony keeps saying that PlayStation 5 will come this year. But it is weird because Microsoft showed off the system back in December. They showed off a new game for next gen in December. They have had YouTubers come in, including Digital Foundry and Austin Evans, come in and tear down an Xbox Series X and then rebuild it and put it back together. They have had them go hands-on with the system. They have showed off so many features from the quick resume and the and the switching between games really fast and the improvements to things like Gears of, Gears of War 5 and how that's going to be better compared to last gen. And they have showed off new gen. And there's another new gen game. To, like, Microsoft is killing it. And everything we keep hearing from Sony's camp is a lot of weirdness you know the very first thing they show us besides the spider-man tech demo from two years ago is the logo like the logo is a big reveal hey look it's the playstation font with a five instead of a four whoop de doo it's exactly what we expected it to be how is that a big deal um and it, just a lot of things about this feel strange remember like there was also the rumor that came out that um they're worried about pricing with it because it costs like 450 bucks to even manufacture a dang uh playstation 5 and they're worried what microsoft's going to do because if microsoft takes a loss and it sells at 399 I, they don't know how they're going to react to that i honestly i am really uh concerned for playstation 5 and all these concerns based on rumors and, and reports and developers could be nothing. It could just be a bunch of hogwash in the wind. But the only reason, the only reason, really two reasons to be clear, why everyone is kind of um, thinking something's up is because Sony's not confidently showing the platform. Microsoft just keeps beating us over the head with the Series X. Here's what it could do. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Here's how powerful it is. Here's the clock speeds. Here's this. Here's that. Here's games. Like, they're just confidently showing off features and games and everything to do with Xbox Series X besides the price point, which we assume they're going to unveil in June. So they're hitting us with so much information. And here you have Sony, where the first legit info we get, which is about the specs, Everything looks just worse than what the Series X is doing, and in some cases by a pretty decent margin. Uh, and and it's baffling to me. Like they can get a high, they can achieve a higher clock speed on a single core, but the rest of the cores are downclocked to the point that it doesn't really matter. It, it's it's baffling to me uh, what they're doing uh with the playstation 5 so far nothing they have talked about beyond how amazing the ssd supposedly is which is you know just literally pci gen 3 or whatever gen 4 um it, it's it, it's great it's cool but does anybody really care especially if it overheats and it's not actually running at the max speeds they tout all the time it's only able to hit it sometimes and in more intense games maybe never hit that i i I'm just, I'm concerned. And the thing is, I know that I obviously have a little bit of bias. I've been a Nintendo and Xbox guy. Nintendo, Xbox, and PC gamer for a long time. I've never really deep dove uh, into a PlayStation system despite owning them in the past. Owning a PlayStation 3 and all that. I don't even own a PlayStation 4. Never bought a PlayStation 4. I plan to play all the PlayStation 4 exclusive games on the PlayStation 5. Uh, and I still plan to do that. But it, it is baffling to me uh, to see this this happening i guess um and this is before we get to the fact that that microsoft might have an even cheaper budget system for people uh i don't know if it'll come out right away at launch but you know supposedly there's a cheaper um next gen you know console that's less teraflops but can still run games pretty decent for people that are budget oriented i man um it, it's weird and now do i think sony's in trouble i think that's that's one thing to take away is sony really in trouble no Every system they sell, the worst is the PlayStation 3 at 80 plus million. That's pretty good. 
Uh, so I don't think the PlayStation 5 is in trouble, but they definitely have kind of flip-flopped with Microsoft over this last gen. See, at the beginning of the current generation, um, Xbox really made a lot of flubs in how they talked about their system, the Xbox One, and PlayStation 5 just kept doling out the punches, came out the gate hot, and never looked back. And I think this time around, uh, it kind of looks like Microsoft is rolling out the punches, and they're just spanking Sony over and over and over again, and they might actually rush out the gates. Now, not necessarily in Japan, of course, but you know, in the U.S. and Europe, which are the biggest markets for gaming, it's possible that Xbox Series X takes a sizable lead to start the next gen. It's going to be crazy to watch the sales come in, and obviously, you know, we all know that that the COVID-19 situation might affect stock in some way. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Uh, we won't know until we get to the launch. But um, if the PlayStation 5 is delayed a year because they're redesigning the whole system, that's not unheard of. You know, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 did not come out in the same year. Uh, they came out a year apart. So that it's not unheard of to have that happen, but it is unheard of to kind of like have that happen and have the system that comes out later be weaker than the system that came out first. Does that make sense? That's what's strange about it. Is like if they delay it, it's still a weaker system than the Xbox Series X. So it already feels like they're starting behind the ball and then it just feels like they're going to be further behind because you know that Microsoft will be working on a new revision of the Xbox that will probably be more powerful uh, to release two or three years later. So they'll already be you know a year closer to that. I, I don't know. I don't know what Sony's doing. All I know is Sony... Mark Cerny, all the people concerned, if you guys want to alleviate these rumors, you guys want to alleviate these concerns, it's time to take the damn lid off of this system. You need to show us what is going on. You need to show us games. And honestly, the games are what are going to build confidence in what you're doing. Uh, right now, I got a feeling that now that The Last of Us 2 has been delayed, that that's going to end up being a launch game. And that's great. That's the breath of the wild, right? For Sony. But... It's still a just a PlayStation 4 game upported. Like like we need to see real next gen games uh, for a system that's touting all this power. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Robo Jazz from the Center Prime. Be sure to let me know what you think about the PlayStation 5 situation down in the comments below. Do you put any credence with these rumors? Uh, do you dismiss them? It's cool. You guys, you know, you guys might even be more knowledgeable on this topic than I am. Um, because right now Sony is kind of staying mum on everything. So I'll just catch you guys in the next video.